Hello, good morning, uh, good evening, uh, good afternoon, depends where you are. So, uh, my name is uh, Velko Janic, I'm CEO of uh, Bexel Consulting and today I'm gonna uh, talk in this presentation about our integrated uh, about integrated uh, uh, scheduling uh, in an open 4D and 5D BIM environment and uh, mention several things which are very important for optimized scheduling process and uh, how it can uh, essentially uh, uh, bring a lot of benefits to the, to the potential, potential users. Uh, so about uh, us, uh, we are a software development and consulting company, 15 years in software development, 10 years in construction project management, have implemented uh, 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 Bexel uh, Manager on a lot of projects uh, in the world on essentially five continents, have a very good uh, a network also of our partners and resellers around the globe. Uh, one of the most important thing is that we are also building smart multi multinational member, Autodesk and Graphisoft partner. And, uh, and in this presentation, you will hear a lot of times about IFC, BCF, uh, MVDs, and so on. So about the standards developed by building smart, and uh, to be honest, we are really proud to be part of that uh, organization because essentially uh, what Building Smart uh, did in the last 20 years is that they uh, helped really a lot in digitalization and standardization of construction industry. So essentially this is, uh, you will see in this presentation and essentially in Bexel Manager that we always try to have an open BIM approach. So to work with IFCs, BCFs and other open formats and MVDs because we believe that this is really something which is, uh, which is the future of uh, of digitalization in construction industry. So this is uh, our uh, project and reseller network. Uh, and uh, we have uh, to be proud uh, that we are really expanding this network uh, very fast. So we are also uh, 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 having a collaboration with a lot of universities and faculties and high schools around the globe. Uh, current uh, situation is that we have in uh, almost, I think, 140 countries uh, our educational licenses. And uh, we really, uh, we are really proud that a lot of students around the world are working with, uh, with the Bexel manager in their master uh, thesis and their PhD thesis. So see, here are some of our clients, uh, really from large investors to the consultants, manufacturing companies, and so on. Uh, this is, uh, let's say, our vision about integrated BIM. And uh, now this is World Economic Forum research, which uh, essentially uh, says that uh, integrated BIM is going to have the highest impact in the in the future and we strongly believe in this and a lot of ISO standards are developed according to this integrated BIM approach. Uh, so shortly about Bexel Manager. So uh, this is a portfolio of our uh, of our flagship product uh, Bexel Manager and uh, you have uh, from the light version, engineer version, facility maintenance version, enterprise and uh, our main product is Bexel Manager, which is going to be presented here, but more or less all the applications have the same user interface. Uh, it's quite similar uh, uh, functionalities, full interoperability. The only uh, difference is several modules are added in certain versions. So we are IFC certified by Building Smart, fully support open IFC and BCF file formats. We have also IFC export could handle really very large 
a number of IFC files in MMC multimodal container environment and uh, and you will see now uh, this is uh, you will see the, the main workflows uh, in in 4d and 5d environment today so we have 3d beam design engine we have 3d beam check engine 4d and 5d intelligent project management engine and facility maintenance engine in our solution uh, so we can handle also very important multi-cost database system uh, and multi-classification environment. We mostly uh, believe that in the future ISO standard 12006 uh, uh, will be imposed uh, in uh, most of the countries, uh, but we also support any traditional classification system uh, and uh, could easily handle various uh, cost databases uh, and, uh, and I'll explain to you a bit more. Uh, in, in a couple of minutes. Uh, so we have uh, intelligent scheduling engine and uh, you'll see today in an example how we can mix zones and methodologies as essentially like uh, Henry Ford did uh, more than a century ago with assembly lines. Uh, we have the similar approach uh, and we can really in a very fast manner create optimized schedules and this is really something we strongly believe will be the future of uh, the construction scheduling. Uh, we have also an intelligent way how you do uh, project updates. So whenever you receive new IFC files, uh, the system tries to automatically update everything. We have IFC export and we have also project management cloud-based collaboration platform. So this is, let's say, our common data environment. Uh, in this example is uh, for more for facility maintenance solutions. So you have a document management system as well. Uh, everything is, as I mentioned, based on IFC and BCF, and you can easily integrate all the documents existing, tailor the system according to, let's say, clash detection matrix or define rule checks and so on in the early stage. And later, of course, at the end, you have integration with various tools for reporting, such as Power ABI, traditional reporting systems, Excel or project. And the, the, this is essentially, we always try uh, to allow the user to easily access to the data and easily transfer the data to other systems we, because uh, we believe the future is always in collaboration. Uh, so this is about our uh, big vision. So you can maybe today name it uh, ISO uh, 19650. So an integrated approach from early design stage to the operation stage. So to have a smooth workflow of information, this is something which is today the the most challenging part and a lot of systems applications unfortunately in some way could be a dead end so when you finish a certain design stage you cannot easily transfer all the data to contracting or to planning stage and this is uh, this is today really a challenge and I'll, I'll explain to you today several examples how we uh, essentially overcome this. So when we are talking about workflows uh, as an introduction, I'd like to show uh, to use uh, our main workflows, uh, which are going to be mentioned today. Uh, and uh, also uh, after this webinar, uh, we are going to send to you all to all participants, uh, uh, this materials. So of course you can later use it uh, and, uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, uh, let's say uh, fine tune your strategies of the future usage of Bexel Bexel Manager. So, uh, of which what is the main workflow? So you can essentially handle uh, a lot of IFC files and manage the update uh, of them directly in Bexel Manager. Uh, so for a certain application such as Autodesk Revit, we have also a uh, direct add-in application, but let's say for the others such as Graphisoft, Plum, Bentley, Vectorworks, Stack or basically any of the IFC applications, you can easily integrate uh, 
uh, not of course just geometry but all properties relationships so everything which is defined in IFC uh, uh, classifications everything could be read in the Excel manager then you can easily communicate with the updates and whenever the IFC files are updated or uh, the model is updated you can easily update the BIM model and all analysis and what is also very important you can export uh, this uh, combined IFC file uh, uh, which does not have just original data but everything which is enriched such as uh, additional uh, additional properties, cost, scheduling information, everything, uh, selection sets, so everything which which uh, have the uh, very uh, which is important for the further usage could be uh, exported via IFC or in certain cases when we are talking about selection sets with uh, with BCF. So in another uh, use use case is uh, and uh, workflow is for clash detection so basically you define uh, you can define a clash detection groups so it is not rocket science something very standard but also you can import custom clash uh, matrix and uh, custom defined rules and uh, then automatically run clash detection and produce reports easily and export these reports in uh, any any standard format such as BCF, HTML, PDF. You can see, see the statistics uh, and analyze the number of clashes in Power BI or, or via our Bexel Manager API, uh, easily, uh, easily customize the reports. What is also very important that uh, with Bexel Manager automation using Bexel Manager API, you can easily customize group, organize those clashes uh, based on a certain additional rules, identify which clashes are important, which not. I just give you an example. You can organize the clashes uh, by the cost of the elements involved in those clashes or organize the clashes uh, in the groups uh, according, uh, um, according to the construction schedule. So let's say these clashes are going to occur first month, second month, or by week. So you can combine all this information. In our last webinar, we mentioned briefly about our Bexel Manager API, and we are going to also send you some information after this webinar, uh, how you can use uh, easily Bexel Manager API. And uh, in a sense of data management, what is also very important that in Bexel, you can define, uh, and I'm gonna show you some uh, short examples um, uh, here in this presentation. So uh, you can define automated BIM data checks, uh, which could basically check some basic properties or you can define a customized uh, checklist uh, such as uh, to verify if it's according to COBE standard, NetSpec standard, the uh, Omni class, certain standards and properties or co class, or, or you can also uh, define uh, more complex rules such as if the identify the windows which are not hosted by walls detect uh, uh, the elements which does not have cost information organize the elements uh, uh, or uh, organize the elements according to the uh, to the scheduling information and so on so you can do various checks uh, or detect, let's say, which uh, elements does not have, let's say, documents properly assigned to them, such as, let's say, operation manuals and so on for preparation for operation stage. And uh, what is also very important that you can uh, enrich the model automatically in Bexel. So we are not just the solution for data checks. We can easily enrich the model with new properties, new values, new relationships, and I'll give you an example how we can easily add uh, 4D and 5D data to, to the B model. And later those, the, uh, those models could be 
uh, or let's say if, they are, if we are talking about um, uh, checks, we can do selection sets via BCF format easily exchange with any other application. We have also integration with BIM Collab, so uh, you can easily via cloud manage those clashes or issues on the project. Also via our add-in, uh, easily uh, or directly just simply by exporting properties and those and uh, respective goods of the elements you can uh, send back the information to Autodesk, Revit, to Graphisoft, uh, to Tecla, to all plans so later use this uh, in the uh, for the for uh, for the let's say further analysis in BIM authoring tools but also of course you can uh, uh, export the data in IFC format and then later use it uh, in any application uh, uh, you want. There are some videos available also on our YouTube channel so you can see the examples how essentially this works. Uh, also very important about cost uh, databases. So uh, in Bexel Manager you can easily uh, import any cost database uh, existing at the uh, at the market, uh, so this could be a standard uh, company, region, country specific cost uh, data format such as BC3, DIN 276, uh, NRM2, OmniClass. So uni format, of course, master format within uh, OmniClass. So any of those classifications and respective cost items you can easily import. I'll give you an example, let's say RS means from the uh, US uh, was the first cost databases we integrated, it was I think 12 years ago. So, so uh, we have the ability to easily uh, import uh, the data in our cost uh, manager application and in the Bexel manager easily use this for uh, cost estimating. Then what is also very important that in the Bexel manager you have the ability to add element, uh, uh, automatically add uh, element queries uh, to each cost item and when you define those element queries and the respective formulas uh, within cost items, the system uh, uh, enables users to do the auto assign cost items to model element and really in a matter of seconds create the cost analysis according to the certain classification and certain standard. And we have really a lot of examples in the world when the users uh, by defining those intelligent BIM cost databases easily estimate uh, their future projects based on the uh, results from the previous previous projects. Then later, of course, you can do manual assignment and fine tune the data. And uh, what is also very important when you have this integrated model, all the elements formulas are, are connected and you can easily create a detailed bill of quantities, export this data to to, BC, uh, to IFC or to Power BI, compare various versions or export back uh, data to any uh, standard used format such as the GAIB which is used in Germany or BC3 from Spain or any other via Bexel Manager add-in. When this process is finished, we are going to the uh, 5D scheduling engine. And uh, in this case, and this is going to be focus of today's presentation, uh, you essentially uh, have already predefined construction methodologies. So uh, this is essentially like in an assembly line you have in, a, in a, let's say, car manufacturing industry. So you define the workflow from, let's say, uh, defining barriers uh, around construction site up to the furniture uh, uh, in, in the building. So you define all the activities and then the system uh, and these methodologies could be different for different types of projects. So you can have, let's say, two standard methodologies for office buildings, two for tunnels, one for bridges, for hospitals, separate methodology. So basically, by your expert knowledge, you easily 
define those construction methodologies. And then when you have them defined uh, on every particular project, you can easily define zones. Uh, the system could mix the zones, uh, like I'm gonna show you in uh, the uh, live demo today. And then uh, you define, let's say, the certain levels in construction schedule. Let's say first level is construction methodology. Then you have uh, buildings. Third level could be building levels. And third one could be zones within building levels. And the system really uh, automatically generates the schedule, uh, which is fully line of balance prepared and optimized schedule, which, of course, later could be uh, additionally fine-tuned and, uh, and uh, resource balanced. And uh, then this schedule could be easily exported uh, to Primavera project if you want to see just the results, or you can manage entire uh, uh, actual schedule later in the Bexel Manager easily. So uh, it is also very important that you can IFC uh, export uh, the data into IFC format uh, and create uh, easily 4D and 5D simulation. Uh, we also understand that there is a traditional way where the users are get still get used to uh, start with the manually developed project or Primavera uh, construction schedule and then would like to import this in 4D and 5D. We believe that this is really um, uh, let's say difficult work uh, which uh, really uh, requires a lot of efforts to be done and the updates later are not very smooth but uh, just wanted to mention that we also fully support this workflow and you can easily uh, import uh, construction schedule from the traditional uh, planning software such as Primavera or project. Later when uh, 5D, 4D, 5D simulation is generated. Uh, you can, uh, let's say, in the, this workflow, easily um, uh, uh, select the elements which are planned for the following day, following uh, week, following month, and via BCF format, uh, send this to construction site. Let's say you can in Bexel Manager directly input the progress on construction site but also you can use any other application in this example, let's say Trimble Connect or Autodesk BIM 360 on the site. Uh, so you receive on the site the, the actually what are the, the elements which are planned to be done in the certain period and then send uh, and then just fine tune the results on the site based on the actual progress and via again BCF uh, uh, format, send this information uh, again into into Bexel Manager. Uh, if you are doing everything within Bexel Manager, you don't need to, uh, let's say, connect these selection sets uh, uh, fully uh, to the tasks. Uh, so it's a bit faster process, but more or less uh, you have available videos also, and we are going to send you some uh, videos with the workflow examples also after this webinar so you can see how essentially easily you can track the progress uh, also by using other applications such as let's say Trimble Connect. When you update the schedule because we, we are a multi-cost and multi-schedule environment you can easily compare planned versus actual. Uh, you can also enter uh, resources activity uh, in the in that progress so attach let's say actual number of uh, 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 workers uh, or equipment used or material spent to this uh, uh, to to do those activities done in a certain period let's say in the last month and based on that immediately have earned value analysis which let's say you can later analyze in Power BI or send to the top management in Power BI or into any other available format. Uh, of course, what is also very important, easily monthly certificates could be produced or weekly certificates, so it depends 
on the on the use cases uh, uh, you would like to cover and the results you are willing, uh, willing to achieve. But again, what is also crucial, IFC exports rule. Uh, at the moment, uh, there are not too many, or there are just a few, or maybe even just one uh, application beside Bexel Manager available at the market, which can essentially read IFC four. Uh, open standard uh, uh, for uh, with uh, tasks and uh, resources and and the relationships uh, between them of course all tasks connected with the elements but we believe strongly that in the future there will be other applications which can export the data in an open IFC IFC format and within building smart we are working also on the IFC MVD format for model view definition for 4D and 5D and we would like to standardize this, this in the following period. So now let's go to the to the to the live demo and in this case you can see uh, the just our sample B model with with the uh, uh, with uh, the let's say basic elements uh, defined in it and in our viewer uh, you can easily let's say see what elements you would like and isolate the elements and so on but also what I want to mention that as I as uh, in order to check the quality of this model I think it's based just on a basic uh, three IFC files just want to mention that on a, on a some uh, very large project, we could handle several hundreds of IFC files uh, within one one uh, model. But what is also very important that uh, in Bexel you can easily let's say see your clashes. Uh, it's a similar like in any other solution, uh, and uh, let's say all those clashes you see you can also immediately send them to BCF manager and then send to, to the let's say designers back in the authoring tools or send these reports in the in the power bi just with statistics number of clashes and so on but also what is very important with uh, with this this we are not just covering a clash detection but we can easily in a customized way do various property and data checks so in this example, this is a small add-in application model checker, uh, and it basically checks the properties and assign classification codes, but could be really much more complex. And uh, in this case, in a second, I, I uh, let's say, this is just wanted to mention, this is a fully customizable small add-in application. So you can by yourself in a day write uh, your own example uh, and we have also uh, examples let's say when when you can easily check if the if the data is according to the certain standard done but also uh, much more complex checks could be automatically done in in Bexel manager and now as a result i receive here uh, the model check result i see the time when the the this uh, uh, check is done and uh, I can see of course this is fully customizable see various properties various results so let's say the elements which does not have area property or elements which have warning and then I can isolate those elements let's say those elements are having warning for the area and if I want to use a painting for those elements so I know that I cannot quantify uh, the painting because area property is missing and then later easily can just uh, in a BCF manager I can easily uh, create a new issue and uh, and uh, and basically send to the to the users um, uh, easily later so it's what is also very important uh, to 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 mention that uh, not just again not just properties but also uh, a lot of additional uh, data such as uh, such as uh, uh, 
relationships or cost information and every other aspect of the model could be checked in the in the Bexel Bexel manager. Okay, so now we are going to the most important part of the of uh, this presentation, today's presentation, and uh, in this uh, example uh, uh, use case, we are we are going to talk about uh, the first of all cost estimation process. So now in this case uh first of all uh i'd like to introduce uh, cost uh our cost uh, editor part in this case you can have various cost uh, classification system in this example we have uniformat and master format but could be easily any other classification available at the market uh, we strongly believe that this is going to be standardized and unified in the future. Uh, and in this case, you basically have the, let's say, cost items, their codes. Uh, also, what is very important for every item, you can have resources. In this case, we have a crew of three carpenters and one common building labor for this activity. I see here the cost the, the daily productivity rate and but what is very important we have additional two columns first one is a query bin query and the second one is formula which describes how based on the properties you can automatically quantify the the actual quantity of those cost items attached to the certain elements and when you have this in Bexel manager you can easily uh, and these are uh, could be existing databases or industry uh, based databases or you can have also let's say your own databases especially a lot of large uh, contractors and investors have their own databases and then we can easily for any of those cost items or cost item groups select the applicable elements in the building and when I isolate those elements, I see that for those piles and pile caps, those elements are applicable. Or in the opposite way, I can select, let's say, a certain, certain layer on the roof and go here to filter applicable. And the system will tell me that the only, let's say, single ply membrane is the only, let's say, uh, applicable element based on the rules which we defined here uh, in, in the model. So the system easily knows which elements could be attached, which cost items could be attached to the certain elements, and then you can automatically uh, create a new cost version or uh, uh, update the cost in the existing version. So in this case, I'm going to choose the option how to assign cost items to new cost version. And in a matter of seconds, the system creates new cost version. I see here the results. Uh, uh, later, I can even double check if uh, all the elements have correct properties. But uh, in this case, just go to auto assign cost items. And as you can see, it's, it's created right now, this cost version. I see all the cost items. So this is not just we have a QTO and uh, there are videos available uh, uh, about our just quantity takeoff. But in terms of bill of quantities, this is really full analysis which uh, which is according to the well-known classifications and standards so this is not just a beam cost estimate it is a really uh, a full detailed cost estimate with all material labor equipment cost units i can go here and even sh see the mappings so it describes to me how the quantities are calculated is it let's say volume multiplied by reinforcement or just volume or any other formula and uh, what is very beneficial uh, is that you have all the results in an interactive environment so now uh, 
uh, let's say if I have this file caps here, I can just go here and uh, choose the option select the element. So I'd like to see where those elements are essentially in the building and, and I isolate those elements, I see where those elements essentially are. Or in the opposite way, let's say I have here a various selection sets and in this case, let's assume that according to uniformat, I organize tendering packages and here I have a, a uniformat D, which is essential, uh, which are essentially services. I can isolate those elements in the model and just choose the option filter by element selection. So I immediately have a tendering package and I see the cost only of the elements which are essentially uh, services. So I can use this as a tendering package with the exact quantities or could have a preliminary estimate. And uh, just to mention, since we can use various cost versions, so I can see, let's say, the data, what is, let's say, from the, the client perspective or, let's say, from the contractor perspective cost analysis. So, okay, just to isolate another group, let's say in this case, interior works. And again, in a second, I can see the cost analysis. But not just that, in this, in this demo, let's say we have a certain uh, phases, zones in the building. And in this case, let's say this is the middle part. This is just for demo purposes. Let's say we have this phase two part of the building and when I isolate that particular phase, Again, I immediately receive the results about the cost of those elements. So now when the pricing is and cost is finished, of course, uh, there are a number of uh, questions. Can we handle also the, uh, the elements, uh, the costs which are not related to the B model? Yes, we can. So you can manually add new or import from Excel additional cost items uh, and expenses which are not directly related to the B model. But also what is very useful in Bexel Manager and what we suggest in uh, your standard workflows, if you don't have all the elements, let's say in this case you have spaces and in custom breakdown structure, I'm gonna show you, let's say those rooms uh, with different colors are different uh, types of the rooms in the building and you can attach the costs to those spaces uh, for example American RS means database have excellent uh, square foot models so they have based on statistics let's say so if you haven't modeled internet wiring uh, in the building uh, based on simply statistics you can create very accurate uh, preliminary cost estimates uh, for those elements. Uh, so you can use spaces for the pricing. And that's essentially how, we cre uh, how you can create very good simulations, even in the preliminary stage, by simply adding those square foot model or square meter uh, model cost items to the spaces. Uh, okay, so now just go back uh, to the to the scheduling process. So when the model is uh, have a cost information, you can go here to the uh, scheduling part. And in this case, uh, as I mentioned, you can have a various scheduling methodologies. And uh, I'm going to choose just one which essentially explains the process uh, so let's say uh, in this case this is a schedule uh, link methodology tailored for office building so we start with basically foundation so, uh, we can have more than one level so just go down and can have uh, level two activities in this methodology i have defined relationships from early foundation then you have construction works then facade works and I'm gonna just move to the, let's say, carpet and furniture and accessories 
activities. Also, what is very important, you can define a standard relationships among those tasks, like, like finish, start, 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 finish, finish, uh, and uh, start, finish. Uh, you can define a lag in working hours, hours, duration, percentage. And what is very important for line of balance, you can, uh, in an intelligent way, copy those relationships to the children tasks. And uh, in this case, this is very important for creating an optimal uh, line of balance and construction schedule. So essentially, you would like to implement this relationship between all the elements uh, uh, on each floor and each zone. So let's say it means that on every zone, on every level, or if you have more buildings, every building, we have, uh, let's say that the carpet has to be done after interior doors are, uh, uh, works are, are finished. And uh, what is also very important that when you, whenever you want to update this construction schedule, you can easily do this by just changing one relationship in methodology, not necessarily in all relationships for the similar activities. So in this case, let's say between exterior walls and uh, cast in place and curtain walls, I'd like to slightly extend the lag and uh, let's say from uh, 80 to 120 working hours. And now you will see when I, when I will create a new version of the schedule, it will automatically have this relationship slightly up. So what is also very important in our system, you can have more uh, creation templates, which are essentially combination of the methodologies and the zones. And in this example, I will have three le levels. First one, which is this methodology I just presented. And we have also two additional uh, uh, zones. First one is essentially building levels. A second one are zones defined in the build. So let's now just see those, those zones. So this is essentially uh, building levels. And the relationship is, in this case, finish start. If we have more buildings, we can run them parallel way or so on. And we have in this example, five building levels. Also what is important, we have, uh, we have a construction sequence. And in this case, we have three zones in the building, which is the left-hand side of the building, middle uh, and, uh, and the right-hand side of the building, just to show those phases to you now. Uh, first one, second one, and the third one. Uh, so, uh, and what is very important that the system automatically combine those zones. So essentially, you will see in line of balance, we could have up to 15 zones because the system combined those five building levels with uh, three, uh, three zones in the building. So in this way, let's say if you have a 10 uh, buildings at the construction side, every building will uh, have let's say uh, has uh, uh, let's say 20 floors you will immediately have 200 zones created and if you divide up those buildings into certain sub zones then this number could be very large but what is important you are not obliged to manually define each of those zones but just the rules and then the system will combine and mix those those zones so now when we have this let's create a new construction schedule from scratch. I'm going to name this webinar. And I'm going to choose here uh, any cost version I, I'd like to use. And I can choose a baseline schedule if I want. It's not necessary. I can I add this later. And now, as you can see, you will have just a one simple dummy task created. And essentially, it's it's uh, uh, we don't have a construction schedule. So what we are going to use is a creation wizard, and uh, 
I'm going to choose this template I just presented to you with three levels. I can add any additional level. I can customize this. I can decide which activities I'd like to exclude, include, and so on. And uh, then I can automatically create a construction schedule. What I also, I just forgot to mention before this wizard, uh, that in the settings, you can define the, the standard task duration because we strongly believe that working in cycles is very important. In this case, it's a standard predefined is 40 working hours, but could be any number you, you define. You can choose which calendar you would like to have. Could be a standard uh, calendar or 24 by seven all, all around the clock uh, schedule. And you can define also a task constraint priority. It could be as soon as possible, but could be as late as possible as well. So there are two different strategies in construction scheduling. So when I uh, have this defined, I'm going to just again load this template. And just in one second, you will see now the system creates construction schedule and it's basically now created and you will see that all relationships in an intelligent way which enables optimized line of balance methodology everything is defined and so i'm going to now show you results in line of balance and as you can see Basically, those gaps are just weekends, so more or less, it's a very optimized construction schedule. We don't have a conflict in this uh, construction schedule, so it's basically from the day one already ready uh, for uh, and, and uh, ready to be executed. But now I'm going to show you how this schedule could be slightly optimized later. What is very important in line of balance on the left hand side, we have a zones. In this case, for every building level, we have three sub phases or zones. And essentially, as I mentioned, it's 15. And we know actually on, let's say, building one, second floor, phase two, activities which are going to be done and we have a, let's say so we can start from the steel beams or a cast in place beams up to the uh, let's say carpet at the end so what is very important that this flow line is like an assembly line in the construction in the in the car manufacturing industry. So unfortunately, we cannot move the building uh, in the same way like we move car from the first activity up to the final uh, activity. But what we can do, move the equipment and the labors in the certain zones in the similar manner. And what is also very important that unfortunately in Gantt chart, Although, although, although it looks nice and it's, uh, let's say, uh, okay, I can see a critical path and number of other stuff. Uh, I cannot identify easily what I can optimize in this schedule. So if I go here to line of balance, I see, let's say, in this example, that zone, which could be optimized and easily could be, uh, could be, uh, let's say that certain activities could be done here. I just explained to you why the system have this space empty because he tries to follow that those activities, in this case, interior doors are done uh, not in the parallel way because he wants to have one crew which is doing the same amount or quite similar amount of work every week. But since those activities, carpet and interior doors, are not labor intensive, we can easily tell the system that we would like to speed up that process because we don't want to lose two additional weeks. So how to do that? You can easily find that, uh, that task in a Gantt chart. And in this example, I'm going to just remove two predecessors. 
because I'd like to speed up slightly this process. So those relationships, everything is automatically generated in Bexel. So we don't have just tasks related to, to, the, to the elements, but also all respective relationships are there. And we would like to, you, to do the same thing for the carpet. Because again, it's not labor intensive activity. And now immediately we can see the results in line of balance. As you can see now, those activities here are parallel and we have a slight two weeks less in our construction schedule. So now what is also very important that we can also easily see the results of resources in our task manager in task reporting system. So now I can see the cash flow, I can see a S curve, I can see a labor usage. So all analysis automatically created uh, from this B model. And of course I can optimize, I'll show you later this. But even without any optimization, you can see that the resources are more or less balanced. And I have to say that in this particular example, it is really the zones are completely different. Uh, the, uh, even on some zones or uh, parts of the building, we don't have the same group of activities. So it is an excellent example. Uh, it is not just, let's say, an optimal building for line of balance. So now when we do this, I'm just going to update the animation and see what we did in this in this initial initial animation so what we also have the ability to easily set up the cameras in the in the project and there are just three four five six cameras in this animation what else i can do is i can change the entire duration and I can choose the option that animation is going to be uh, done on hourly basis. So very detailed animation. And now you can see entire animation created in a couple of minutes. Very detailed on a daily, on an hourly basis, you see what has to be done. Uh, these are just colors. Uh, with different colors, you see a different types of the activities. When the, those activities are finished, you immediately see them in their natural color, or if it's rendered in natural texture. Now, let's say in this case, there are interior activities here, so what I can do is just, let's say, see interior and services works. And now you will see that some activities are done. So, so just to help you to understand uh, interior work process. Or I can jump in the building and see from the, let's say, inside of the building how the construction works are done and so on. So now what is also very important is that I'm going to show you just some examples. Uh, there are a number of ways how we can optimize the schedule, but in this case, I'm going to just in line of balance. Also, I have, let's say in this case, the issue with water piping, because it's not going to overlap, but it's not, you have the breaks. So it's not so smooth. There are always, when you have the float in the tasks, there are always pros and cons. So you can start as soon as possible, but later you have the gaps, or there is another approach where you can move this and start as late as possible, then limit your float. And let's say it's based on Monte Carlo method, more risky approach. But on the other side, you have the one crew of the, uh, uh, of the workers, uh, more, uh, uh, let's say in one, just in one period, 
on the site so much more optimal so if you want to let's say do this what you can do in the settings i'm going to change this to as late as possible this schedule and the certain tasks as well let's say in this properties as late so it's a very robust system so you can change all this. so you can see now when i change this to as late as possible that these activities are really smooth so in a second i did uh, this optimization what also is very important so now i can go to gan chart and see again results in a task report i see some questions i i will answer those questions in a couple of minutes uh, so just wanted to mention uh what uh, so i see immediately results and what is also very important let's say in this case again uh, i have sometimes more than 30 workers on site let's say that i know that i'm not going to have more than three 30 carpenters on site I can just go here and choose the leveling option. I'd like to use it during the entire execution of the project or just in the certain stages. I can choose carpenters or a group of workers. And I can say, okay, it's 30, let's say is the maximum. I will analyze this. I receive the warnings where I have our allocation. And when I choose apply, resolve those issues you will see i will have a slightly extended schedule but on the other side resources are really carpenters are very very smooth what is also very important that let's say in this case i have you know lighting and emergency lighting i can redefine crew just for this type of the work so just for these selected elements not for the all uh for just for those tasks so i can define a maximum number of resources to the entire project or just for the certain stage so in this case i have more or less quite smooth animation of course i can later extend duration of the activities or uh, change this but uh, but what is also very important that in Bexel, uh, I'd like at the end first of all let's say first use cases i'd like to export this uh, info, uh, information back to ifc file so this scheduling and task information so how we can do that uh, as you can see now all the elements have all the properties from ifc but doesn't don't that uh, doesn't uh, have uh, let's say particular element doesn't have the properties related to, uh, to construction schedule and the cost. And what we can do is here is a small add, uh, uh, sorry, it's just a console application. You will see if you have any experience in programming, just even a basic, basic level, this code have, let's say more, I, I don't know, 20 lines. I can choose which schedule in this case is going to be webinar and this is the code which basically automatically add new start finish date and co cost could be total cost or just the labor cost or whatever automatically assign those properties to the elements And now when I execute this, you will see that every element, I am gonna isolate any of those elements, we have additional properties, finished start date and total cost generated by Bexel. And this could be later exported to IFC or those properties and then import it back in in any outer tool all we have the option also to export those properties here directly from from Bexel manager you choose all the properties elements and essentially you have excel spreadsheet with guides and then la later you can import this in any other bim outer tool 
or in any other software for further analysis. What also I want to mention just before I answer to your questions is the way how you can, there are a number of videos available, uh, uh, but what also is very important that, um, let's say, how we create the planned activities for the certain week or month. And then we send this to the construction site, then you just fine tune this and send back in Excel Manager. So let's say in this case, I'm gonna choose a monthly and choose that the uh, first day of the month is actually beginning of that interval. And now in this animation, I'm just going back. I can see the situation of the works. I can just deselect this legend. I see what's supposed to be done up until that very date in the, in the project. And in this case, I can add to selection all elements which has to be finished just in, in that month. Isolate this. And as you can see, and the same is in 3D view, are the elements which has to be done. Then later we send this to BCF manager. And uh, okay, just to, okay, add this, say plan in May. I can, okay, it's not necessary. Deadline defined, describe activities and so on. And when I save this, Okay, no penny, penny. Let's say that this one is. I have this, and I can via BIM call up or in traditional way send this to the construction site and then import the progress data back. And uh, uh, I explained, I think uh, in the last presentation it was explained, but just to give you example uh, how actual versus planned works. So let's say in this case I can compare planned versus actual schedules and in a task report I can see those cash flows and I can see a difference between those activities and uh, and then in a if I have here power bi let's say I can see planned versus actual automatically exported via Excel manager export to power bi so uh, this is uh, more or less uh, uh, the presentation. So I'd like now just to, to answer to your questions. Uh, how to do that. Okay. So uh, can we have a different uh, appearance Profiles from 3D elements, uh, uh, simulating the removing or defending growth simulation. Uh, yes, yes, you can easily define the elements which remove, uh, which could be removed and supposed to be removed, such as scaffolding and so on. So you can create those as animations as well. You can have also what we call neutral elements, which will always be shown. Let's say these are existing buildings, surrounding area, and so on. So you can fine tune this. Okay, uh, we are doing fast track, so we are adding new elements and quantities during uh, most of the phases of the project. Uh, this is uh, really uh, very important that when you define, when you add the new elements based on the certain zones, whenever you update the model, uh, those elements with the cost information will be automatically in Bexel Manager. Then later, what is also very important that uh, uh, zones are uh, defined in a in a uh, in a way that you have a smart selection sets, and when you have those smart selection sets, uh, you can you can have the ability to uh, to automatically create those tasks by using our methodology. So you have defined the smart selection sets and whenever you uh, do those selection sets, uh, you, you have the entire uh, 
schedule automatically updated. So workflow will be that whenever you update the new version to let's say IFC, you can update this with uh, within uh, those new elements within Bexel Manager. Then if you have defined smart selection sets, uh, or uh, uh, you can immediately create a new cost assignment to those elements. And uh, when you have this cost information, by knowing which methodology, uh, uh, within methodology, when those activities has to be done, the system will create it automatically, will create automatically a lot of additional tasks, even between already existing tasks. So this is the huge benefit uh, and this uh, automated uh, scheduling is not just important for, for uh, initial schedule, it's even much more important for every change. So whenever you add the new elements, or new groups of activities and so on, or change, let's say, add lighting fixtures, change the walls and so on, the system will automatically create an updated, updated version. I think there was a one webinar when one of the, my, my colleagues uh, presented this, this use case earlier. Are there any other questions? So if not, then, uh, uh, okay. Then I'd like to invite you to go to our website uh, for existing users, of course you can, uh, or you watch our uh, YouTube videos or uh, follow us or LinkedIn or Twitter, and you can easily also, um, uh, if you have any questions directly ask our support team. Uh, again, just to mention that uh, whenever the, the simulation and analysis are finished, just to mention again, you can enrich the model with the uh, new files, IFC files, but also very important, export the model to IFC. So these are, this is very important and we'll later use it uh, uh, in, in any other application which basically could read IFC. So thank you again uh, uh, for this, uh, for your time, uh, and uh, we are most welcome to answer to all of your questions in the future. Bye-bye.